Hi, my name's Paul. I direct and edit music videos and live sessions all using my iPad Pro. And today I'm just going to go over the apps I use and the workflow. So the apps I like to use are Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer for overlays. Uh, I also uh, like to dabble into Procreate um, if I need to draw anything or uh, make any uh, cool illustrations. Uh, and the main app we're going to be using today is actually Luma Touch or Luma Fusion. And I believe it's $19.99 in the App Store. You can go and check it out. And it's a very powerful tool. You have your photos on your iPad. You have your iCloud files. You have a NART box. Uh, you have wireless drives imported. You could use Storyblocks if you have any of those uh, uh, music files you want to do or uh, any of that pre recorded uh, video stuff. Uh, you could do tiles, transitions, and your music library. Uh, you also have the option to go into Dropbox, Google Drive, any of those uh, cloud services, and you could import from there, which is super awesome. Um, so my main workflow is going and dropping all my footage into my lazy hard drive. And this is um, a USB-C connector uh, drive. So I could just pop that into my uh, iPad and I could just drop my footage into there or work directly from the hard drive, which is awesome. Uh, I also have an SD um, card reader and I could just pop that in on the iPad and I could just throw my footage in there. Um, so I already have my footage organized into the files app. I'm going to go ahead and go over there, go into my projects and go into unit zero two live session. And we're going to be working in anime club, which is the abbreviated version of it and footage. All right. So here we go. So we're going to quick look. And uh, what I also like to do is I like to work with the slate board. So it claps in and I could find out where those waves are. So when I'm mixing the audio, uh, with the video, I could find out where it's going to be um, starting and stopping for that. Uh, so it's really easy to um, find it and find an input, input and output point. Um, for the for the naming, uh, there's two camera operators, myself and Blake. Uh, we're so we're going to name each video uh, according to the camera operator, uh, or you could do scene one or scene two, uh, depending on if you had multiple scenes going on. And definitely want to name the take so you know which take is the best uh, for the audio when you're listening back to it. So when you're reading back on the slates, it's like take two, take three. And just make a note on the uh, best version of it, best take that you're going to mix the audio with so that you have the right video for that. So let's go ahead and go back into Luma Touch. And I already have the main video chopped up and edited. But I'm going to just go ahead and take a moment to talk about the uh, process of doing this. So um, what I started with was the mastered audio. So I went into my imported sessions, anime club audio. And I went ahead and grabbed it. And this ha already has a designated input in point and an out point. Um, so what I did is just listen to it. All right, cool. And I set the endpoint by swiping left or pressing I on the keyboard and got my out point. What I went to do is get the B camera, which is going to be the second angle. So for this one, let's actually go back into anime club, go into footage. And that's going to be Blake scene one, take three. All right. And I went ahead and previewed the video beforehand. And I set that endpoint, which is right here where Eli the drummer starts tapping the sticks and leads the uh, band into the song. And I went ahead and went to the end and set that out point. Um, so I went ahead and dragged that in. And the best way to line up the audio is you see on these previews of the video clips, you could see all the waveforms and line them up. Um, almost exactly. And how I started was I had this fully expanded and I could see all the waveforms here. And I'll show you how that looks with all these projects. So let me go ahead and take this dissolve off and move it over. All right. Let's collapse that side on menu. And you can see right here, um, if we go ahead and zoom all the way into these uh, stems, they're all going to line up with the clicks. Uh, all right, yeah. We do want to toggle on uh, these video tracks uh, independently, though, uh, and we want to 
few of them and see how it's lining up with the clicks. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the audio track for the mastered file and the audio track for the first camera B visuals. And I'm going to go ahead and preview those. Looks like it lines up. And let's toggle on and off. So it looks like visually it lines up with the mastered audio track. So I'm going to go ahead and mute that. And let's do the same for the camera A. Let's go ahead and check that out. So let's listen. Let's go further into the project so we can see the tapping. Let's go right here. Looks like let's go to a longer, longer shot. Looks like this is a pretty long shot. Let's go and try that. Yeah, okay, let's try one more just in case. Let's get a shot of the drums, see if it's lining up. Yep. Looks like it's lining up, so I'm gonna go ahead and toggle both on. Zoom in, let's go ahead and collapse these on the side. Or let's turn this, this back on. And Let's undo that. Let's go ahead and unlock these or unlink these. And what we want to do is we want to move this back. Yeah. All right, what we want to do is we want to move this back to where it started. Move this back to where it started. So it looks like we're, we're going to be looking at, for this one, um, the start of the movement. So it looks like we start moving right there. And just so I know what's going to happen with the project, I'm just going to throw that, uh, that transition right now. Don't have to worry about it later. Just so I know that the other camera underneath is uh, not showing over there. I'm going to go ahead and toggle this on. And collapse these menus on the side so we could see the timeline again. And regarding the little overlay right here of the title, I went ahead and uh, designed that with Affinity Designer. So let's go ahead and open that up. So here's Affinity Designer now. Went ahead and uh, got us a screen capture. So I went to LumaFusion and I got. Like a little thumbnail going on so all you have to do is do the snapshot and this is really useful um, for creating those thumbnails if you want to do a thumbnail for youtube or uh, vimeo facebook if you have the ability to get a, a thumbnail and a snapshot there let's go ahead and press snapshot writes a snapshot in awesome you go ahead and navigate back into designer and you'll go ahead and load that snapshot so i already have that loaded right here you want it to fit the framing of the video you're working on and to get these effects so I just went ahead and did a, a text overlay a title overlay let's go ahead and solo that so that's the overlay I did and I did a few effects on here so I did this fog effect and I put keyframes with it so it kind of looks like a neon sign and I also put a Gaussian blur and that's how we get that effect right there so let's ha let's have those two play out awesome and then paired with the text, it's going to look like this. So in and out. And you could definitely just tweak that. Put any effects you want um, to your heart's desire. I did a little flash right there. So it's like a neon sign, like flickering. Looks cool. I like it. Because I made it. I like it. All right. And now that you have those uh, two... Or now they have all those components in the video, um, you're probably wondering, like, how do you do that multi-camera uh, editing? And with this one, with this app, uh, we don't have that update uh, or flexibility and option to do multi-cam edits yet. But uh, since you lined up the clips already, or since we lined up the clips already, we could go back and forth and we could set markers in. So what I did is I went ahead and muted all the other videos. So you basically want to solo the video that you're working on, which is uh, for us, it's going to be camera B, which is my camera. And I'm going to go ahead and just play it back, watch it over, 
and I'm going to set a marker for all the shots that I want to include for this camera. And then you go ahead and you solo the next clip, camera uh, A or the main camera. And you want to have that over. You want to have that as the uh, main layer so you can see that more. Um, and you want to do the same process. You want to um, put the clips you want to include and you want to set the ins and out points with a marker so that you can edit around those. So see, screen went black because I wanted to edit to the second camera right there. And for this one, I wanted to do uh, quick transitions and edits uh, for these. And I did a few of these uh, uh, crossfades in here. I, th I think I threw one or two in. Yeah. So once you piece together your video, uh, with that same snapshot feature, you want to find, um, you want to find a shot that you you prefer to use for to set the grading for it. Because even though you could uh, color grade in LumaFusion itself, which is super awesome, um, you have little to no flex flexibility with the LUTs they include. So I like to make my own LUTs. So what I do is I go into Affinity Photo and I create a look um, based on how I want to uh, run the sessions. So here we are in Affinity Photo and I went ahead and put all my adjustments in. So let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so we have the snapshot of the we have a regular snapshot of the video, ungraded. This is just the raw clip. And I went ahead and put all my adjustments in, in layers. And I went ahead and tweaked it with either the lighting, soft light, the opacities, etc. Looks like we're going to turn this one off and change these out a little bit. And once you have the look that uh, you want to put over all the videos, instead of copying and pasting and trying to work through the projects, all you have to do is go ahead and navigate over here to this tab right here on the side right there. It looks like a paper with three dots, right? And you want to go ahead and export that LUT. Go ahead and name that LUT. And let's just do live sessions. You can put a description if you like. And for the quality, I like to raise it all the way up to 64. Make sure the format is .cube. And you could go ahead and load a preview. And it'll just, it'll kind of just load it over there. But you wanna go ahead and press export. Um, let's go back into that. So, all right, so you want the settings to be the highest. You wanna go ahead and name this uh, live session look. And you wanna go ahead and export it. And it's going to drop those into the LUT folder for LumaFusion. And since I already saved mine, I just want to go ahead and close that. And in LumaFusion, all you have to do is, all right, so you want to bounce back into LumaFusion. You want to go ahead and find a clip. There's one, all right. And so let me go ahead and delete these. So I did two different grains on these. So I put the LUT over and then I just finally tuned it in LumaFusion, but you want to go ahead and go to the second tab right here. Here's all my LUTs. And if you don't see your LUT, all you have to do is import the LUT. And you can import from anywhere you have those LUTs stored, whether it's an external hard drive, uh, Dropbox, Google Drive, any of those. Uh, for ours, it's in our Files tab. So here's all the LUTs. All you have to do is press that, downloads it, throws it into there. Awesome. Cool. Let me go ahead and delete this. I don't want I don't want duplicates of the LUTs. And you could just change the blending mode just like that. So it looks like that's pretty intense. So we're going to have it at about 30% opacity. And I just, I just want to finally tweak it for the contrast and all that. So we're going to go, go in here, brighten it up a little bit. Up his height. Oops. Awesome. Cool. That's looking presentable, so let's go ahead and go back. And all you have to do is go back out. Um, whenever you're grading or whenever you're putting LUTs uh, or applying LUTs into the footage, I definitely recommend putting the LUTs first before you start editing it and cutting it, cutting it up because you would have to copy and paste it onto every single individual clip, and that's going to be very time-consuming. So go ahead and just put those LUTs over 
right before uh, you start editing and chopping up your video. And the best way to go into that, the best way to start your editing process is making sure that everything is uh, going to run as smoothly as possible. So if you have a lot of footage uh, that you're working with or a lot of 4K footage, uh, you definitely want to have a fast workflow. So uh, I put the preview as the fastest and make sure that everything is um, looking good. I don't have too many backups for that. So hopefully I don't mess up a lot. Uh, for the projects, uh, saving the projects and stuff. So, yeah. And then, you're done with your project. You like how it looks. You want to go and export it. Export it into anything. For the YouTube, um, I believe it does export in 4K as well. So, you're safe to export directly. You just, all you have to do is keep the app open whenever you're exporting anything out of LumaTouch. So, what I like to do is I like to put it into my photos directly. Uh, you want to check the warnings because you want to make sure that the right video or audio are muted or taken out or soloed you want to just take that all into account you want to say your resolutions and usually it, it um already has like the best optimized settings for you but you want to make sure those are right and we're gonna you could do ultra or extreme we're gonna do extreme because it's going to be presented on youtube and on twitter so we don't have to have like the you know highest high settings and make sure you have enough space. I don't have enough space, but I have like four versions of this video, so it doesn't really, yeah, it's, it's fine. And you export it. Remember, leave that up open, and you could go ahead and see it on wherever you exported it at, it, whether it's your Files app, um, your uh, Google Drive, or your Photos app. And that's the process. So uh, I hope you liked this short little video. If you didn't, then I don't know why you kept watching it, but that's life. That's showbiz, baby. So, yeah. I'll be making another video on how I mix and master all the audio, how I put it back together, and how I do uh, more music video and trailers uh, and short films using LumaTouch as well, and how to use those overlay effects, um, how I utilize all the uh, tools available on the iPad Pro, and basically the um, functionality of the iPad and how it's really improved with all, each, each update that it comes out with. So thanks a lot. Um, like and subscribe. Show this, show this to your friends. If they have an iPad, just tell them to check this app out. It's really awesome. It's really cool. So have a good day. Thanks.